So my dad and I have always had a love-hate relationship because he's 40 years older than you. So that's a big gap. So he doesn't always understand me and I don't always understand him because we, we, we grew up in such different generations. And for that song, uh, what happened was, and that got me so emotional. And then I picked up my guitar and the words just flew. Writing your own song, does that come with added pressure, added yes. expectation? Now it's my own story, it's my own melodies, it's my own music style, and what if people don't like it? It's not the healthiest life that I have right now. And when people meet me in the street or they recognize me, they're like, oh, you're the girl who sings with the guitar. And I kept thinking for the last few weeks, but where's the girl with the guitar? No one has seen her in a while. I, yeah, I have to be honest about it. Welcome Hi, to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to have you on here. I think we tried to meet in person the last yes, time. I'm and sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. We're really excited to finally have you on board. Me too. Thank you for making the trip down no, to or actually up to the north. It's a nice trip. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. So, Shani, the Mauritians know you, maybe for my non Mauritian audience. Yes. Give us an introduction. Who's Shani? Okay, so I'm Shani. Um, I'm a musician. I'm also a digital marketer and I guess a social media content creator. Mm -hmm. Sweet and concise, yes. <laughs> but I think there's a lot here to unpack. So I know you from high school days. You're a yes. couple of years younger than me. I remember your name. You were one of the laureates in yes. 20... 14? 2014. I think so. So it would be really interesting speaking to you today. I think um, it'd be nice to touch on the education system in Mauritius mm -hmm. and equally your passion for music, yeah. your different creative avenues that you've got going on. Yeah. So maybe let's start with your childhood. My childhood. So I've always been a very creative person. Mm -hmm. I love drawing, I love um, crafting things around the house. Um, and obviously, I love music. I started singing from when I was two years old. I obviously don't remember, but that's what my parents tell me. I was singing Celine Dion. Um, and then I there was a competition called Timambo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. I actually had a video to show you, <laughs> but we we're reacting to this already. <laughs> yeah. God, I have seen it. It's really cute. Thank you. So I was eight years old, and that's when I was on stage for the first time, and I realized I love this. This is mm -hmm. fun. Um, and then I started piano lessons, um, followed by guitar lessons, and then started YouTube, and then everything just snowballed from there. So let's go back to that video. Eight years old, you. Yes. I think if I'm, if my memory serves me right, because I think I've seen this, you were performing to Shakira's objection. Oh, oh yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Very confident little girl, and I think we might show this in the video. Yeah. So <laughs> looking back at this, where did the confidence come from? Um, I think from just being a child and not realizing that you're in front of 400, 500 people and that you're going to be on national TV, because I definitely do not have that same confidence now. <laughs> I cannot, I don't have any moves. I just, yeah, just being a child and having fun. Did mm. you, did you sense, that's really interesting because um, so many times as a child, I think we do not fear much yeah. And there's no sense of rejection. There's no sense of judgment. harassment of judgment. Yeah. And growing up, somehow we're conditioned yes. to have the fear of judgment and what other people think of us. So yeah. when you were eight years old, you were out there freely performing. Mm -hmm. Was there a particular time as you started still being involved in music, mm -hmm. but then you had your academic oh, journey yeah. going mm -hmm. on? What was the transition? Were you spending more time in music? Um, less so, I should say less um, time maybe. No, actually I was, I was learning piano, I was learning guitar and I had discovered YouTube. So I was actually spending more time with music in a more, I don't want to say professional, but mm -hmm. um, more serious manner. Because before I was just singing around the house and then I did this one show. But as soon as I started piano lessons and I discovered YouTube, that's when I started to take it more seriously in a way. I was more consistent. But that's also when I started feeling more um, self-conscious because when you put okay. yourself out there on the, on the internet, you start getting nice comments, but you also start getting not so nice comments. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And what were your parents like throughout this journey? Um, overall, they're very supportive, mm -hmm. but um, they're very traditional parents and your studies always come first. Now that I look back, I'm happy that I... That I had that strict upbringing. 
Um, my mom was definitely more lenient. She always loved to see me sing and, and perform and have my YouTube stuff. My dad, on the other hand, he would always check my grades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, as a student, I was not consistent. I would always just study at the end when it's like two, three weeks before the exams. So the whole year, my dad would stress because he's looking at my grades and he's thinking, what's this child doing? <laughs> and she's doing music like this needs to stop. Um, so it was a good balance between my mom and my dad. I think people who know you will be really surprised by this because, okay, for non-Mauritians, the, the, the education system in Mauritius is really competitive. Like yes. Mauritians thrive on education. And mm -hmm. I think I always say this to my friends abroad. I mean, education is not an, an economic pillar as such, but mm -hmm. if we had to define a way for Mauritians to maybe, especially for Mauritians from a lower socioeconomic background, mm -hmm. education is something that parents are ready to really yeah. fun even if that means taking loans to try to mm -hmm. get you into a good school good university so that you can pave your way up yes so interesting to hear that you <laughs> thought you didn't have the right grades and that your nope. mom and dad was stressing about it yeah because so, um I, I work well under pressure okay. I don't know if it's the same with you but I work well under pressure that's when I um get ideas better that's when I uh, work just work faster and for me, that's the, that's the um, strategy that has always worked, but it was very stressful for my parents. And throughout schooling, and then at what point did you realize you wanted to go? So you, you studied art and design. Was that your field of study or what was um, it? Exactly? I was in the technical stream. Okay. So I did uh, mathematics, physics, art and design, and then French and English. And the interests or rather the decision to pursue those were those Driven um, by your so, choice of profession? Yes. I wanted to become an architect. I don't know why, looking back, uh, I guess because I always liked everything creative, but I also liked technical stuff like mathematics. So I thought good combination would be architecture. So I chose these subjects to become an architect and I did go and study architecture. But then when I was at uni, I realized that's not for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it's, um, it's a subject that you really need to be passionate about, but you don't know if you're passionate about it until you start it. So, yeah, that's why I had to change from architect to marketer. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So two things I really want to focus on. You were competing to be one of the laureates, and I'm quite family of the system, having competed twice and ranked fifth just after. Oh, wow. So I ranked fifth on the economics, on the economic side. Oh, so that's the, a tough one. <laughs> the MCB Foundation Scholarship went to a boy two years in a row. Uh -huh. So I was fifth just right after. Oh, anyway, wow. But you made it. Yeah, but that's still amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So you made it. So when you were competing... What do you think about the system back there? The reason I asked this is I particularly remember it being super stressful and tiring. And for me, it was a commute. It was getting to school. In Mauritius, you do take private lessons after school. So mm -hmm. what was your, what was the structure for you like? What was the dynamics like? Um, so I have to say I was very lucky. Um, I didn't live too far from school. Mm -hmm. um, and well, no, I did have to commute like 45 minutes, but it was fun. I had my friends in, in the bus and um, I was very lucky to have my parents come pick me up quite often after, after school. But they would do that closer to like exam period. So I wouldn't be too tired. Mm -hmm. um, so if it was stressful, yes. Yes and no. I'd say it was stressful near the end because I had kept everything for the last minute. Uh, but throughout the year, I think I did have a good balance of having fun, doing artistic things and, and my studies. Just making sure I was not failing. Making sure you were not failing. <laughs> yeah. And you more than just fell. <laughs> so going back to the day of the announcement. Do you still remember that day? I remember. Um, Where were you? What were you doing? Give um, us the details. So I was with my friends. It was um, all the friends from high school. We were actually in this place called L'Institut Francais. Mm -hmm. I can't remember why we were there, but we were there. And then we were walking down in the parking lot because you don't know what, exactly what time it comes on. And it's too stressful to listen to the radio the whole day. So I was not listening. I was with my friends. And then my best friend's mom called and gave her the news and then she turned to me and she gave me the news and then oh, everyone amazing. started yeah screaming and hugging and yeah oh my god you were so more you were so much more composed than me i knew exactly on which day i mean left alone didn't we're not when i was not part of the list 
but I knew exactly when it was coming out, as in the day, and we were tuning on the radio. That's yeah. such a good way. Yeah, like, I knew you don't the want day, to be. But I didn't know the time. Right. So just the wait, we were like, let's just go hang out. <laughs> That's such a good way not to let it let it get to you. Yeah. So after that, then you decided to go and study architecture. architecture. Where was that? A UCT, University of Cape Town. And then after that, you decided to move back to Mauritius. Yeah, so I completed my studies. I came back to Mauritius uh, without a portfolio because that's what you need to apply. They don't look at your grades. Okay. If you need, they look at your portfolio, what you've done, what you're capable of. And I didn't bring any of that back home. My parents were quite surprised at how mm-hmm. rebellious I could be and because they thought... Um, She'll go work at an architecture firm. She'll get her training there. And then she'll do music on the side. And I said, no, I do not want to do architecture. I've made my mind up. I completed the studies because I, I like to finish things. But um, I'm, not, I'm not going back. And they're like, okay, so what do you want to do? And I said, music. And they went, oh, no. <laughs> This child again. <laughs> but then there was COVID. So okay. I couldn't. And at the same time, I, I was growing on social media, just organically through music. And I found myself very interested in what makes um, good content, why people were following me, what makes um, a content sometimes go viral compared to another. And I started doing some research on that. And I realized, hmm, this sounds like a fun industry to be in. Mm-hmm. And that's when I joined my, the first marketing agency I worked at. Okay. Well, first and only. <laughs> You're first and only. <laughs> Let's get into this then. Mm-hmm. You mentioned you were interested or wanted to find out why people follow you. So why do you, why do you think people follow you? Well, at first, I think they followed me because I was one of the only people who was um, putting music content out there. Mm-hmm. And it was very simple, just with my guitar, my piano. It was very authentic. And I think that's what they liked. Um, I also, I'm a very big believer of, of quality and what I mean by that is not the way I'm singing or whatever is the lighting the um, the framing the background like if you look at Instagram it's very aesthetic true and I'm a very detail-oriented person so from like five six years ago I was already looking at all of these uh, little details making sure the sound quality was really good good lighting you studied architecture I did so it comes in (laughs) handy sometimes So I think I made sure the content was um, was pleasing to look at. I also, I was choosing songs that were trendy because people already know the song, so they might not know you, but they know the song and that gets them to listen. Um, I tried doing um, various types of music. So I wouldn't stick to just one category because mm-hmm. I knew that would restrict me, would be very niche. So I tried, because it's a small country. So I would do Creole, I would do Hindi, I would do French, English just a variety of things and then just and I started posting about my personal life a little bit more like my family my my studies mm-hmm. just like my life and I think from so if I put that into context I I knew you from school yeah. but I think I got to hear more of you in the public domain for your music and then eventually yeah. realized that you were doing a bit of everything yes which is amazing <laughs> but I think that's one of the reasons that people can relate to you Yeah, true. So yeah. when you think about the type of music that you, you sing, mm-hmm. you sing in different languages? Yes. Do you have a favorite? Yes, English. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And do you have a type of music that you like singing? Um, And then you mentioned music that is quite well known, that does well, but is that also what you like singing? Yes, it is. Okay. It was very nice. It was Partly strategic, but also partly what I just, I love listening to. Um, for the longest time, I used to struggle with saying that my style is pop music. Because mm-hmm. whenever you listen to other artists speak, they're always talking about music that regular people don't listen to. Like jazz or things that are more uh, fancy in the music scene. Right. But over the years, I've realized that I have to be true to myself. If I like pop music, I have to say it. I like pop music. I like radio friendly music. Because why do you feel? Do you feel like it's a bit more critique for um, for being commercial? Maybe I don't know what's the I, right term. I think it it because musicians are artists and it needs to be pure. But the moment you go commercial, it's kind of like oh, you like oh. you've switched to the selling portion of the industry. Okay. But if that's what you like, if that's what you enjoy, then I guess you shouldn't try to hide it. So speaking of selling, yes. one of the 
one of your work, if I may say, that has sold really well, or rather has become very popular. And yeah. it, it is probably one of my favorite. Thank you. Which is your song, Papa. Thank you. And I remember the first time I listened to it, I got really emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think quite a few people did. Yes. <laughs> Give us the background story to that song. Um, so my dad and I have always had a um, love-hate relationship because he's 40 years older than me. So that's a big gap. So he doesn't always understand me and I don't always understand him because we, we grew up in such different generations. And for that song, uh, what happened was um, when I, whenever I do anything, whenever I go anywhere, my dad is always like giving me a checklist. Don't forget this. Don't do that. Please do this. <laughs> so okay. I'm like, whatever. Okay, don't worry. And when I went to study, he said to me, okay, I don't know what you'll be doing over there, but please do not lose your passport. Okay. Because that's the one thing that will be very difficult to, to get you a new one. I was about to say really bad. Jack. I was like, he was going to say, please don't get pregnant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I don't know if we're going to keep this or not. <laughs> Yeah, and then I said, uh, yeah, how, how can I lose my passport? That's such an important thing. Right. And then you can guess what happened. You lost it. I lost it, but it was um, like the day before my flight. I was packing my stuff and I was like, hmm, where did I put my passport? Your flight to Mauritius? To Mauritius. I couldn't find it. Called my mom and I said, look, please don't tell dad, but this is what happened. Um, I, what can we do? And then she said, okay, let me call up some friends and see if we can arrange for something. And then in the meantime, I was praying really hard. Mm -hmm. And then I looked for like five hours and I found it. It was a home? It was, it was in one of my um, books. It like, I don't know how it got there, but it like went inside the book. So if you're, if you're picking it up, you won't see it because it's inside. Oh gosh. So, um, and then my dad sent me a message and he said, um, whatever, you, whatever happens to you, no matter how uh, disappointed you think I will be, just know that I will always be there for you and I'll always love you no matter what. So please do not ever feel like you can't tell me things. Mm -hmm. And that got me so emotional. And then I picked up my guitar and the words just, just yeah, it just... What's the word? Flew. Flew. Yeah, the words. Flew. On the day, in the moment. In the moment. I was writing and crying at the same time, recording to make sure I don't lose the idea. It was, it was oh. quite a process. I, I love you more for knowing the story. <laughs> okay. um, I have a really strong bond with my parents, yeah. and particularly my dad. And my dad, on Women's Day especially, because yeah. we're twins, um, oh. so my dad normally sends us a message, mm -hmm. and he's always like, Happy International Women's Day, oh. my daughters. I'm like really proud. And I think. It's just really cute to see, but also knowing that he understands what that means to women of our generation. Because mm -hmm. I think International Women's Day decades ago was probably not such a big yeah. thing. And yeah. I think for my dad to even like draft a really long message, yeah. I personally um, resonate with the story, but and you bond with your, with your dad. Yeah. So going back to, to that, so that was your own composition. Yes. When you transition from singing someone else's song yes. and writing your own song, yeah. Does that come with added pressure, added yes. expectation? So I wrote that song when I was in my second year at uni and it changed my life in the sense that, well, I had written one song before that one. That was the second one. And I thought to myself, okay, I can become a musician. I'm no longer a cover artist. I mm -hmm. write my own stuff now. I, I can turn this into a living. So in a way, it gave me um, a new avenue for, in the music industry. But at the same time, I felt like, okay, now it's my own words. Now it's my own story. It's my own lyrics. It's my own melodies. It's my own music style. And what if that, if, what if people don't like it? What if um, it's, it's not like what I was doing with mm -hmm. covers? So I write a lot of songs, but I don't put them out there because I'm still struggling to um, be confident about them because I write things I'm like I don't know if it sounds good I make my my mom listens to it my sister listens to it but um, I don't really trust their opinion <laughs> because they were what about the boyfriend oh he's very very would he be critical honest. he okay. would yeah, yeah he would but I haven't he would be, and because he would be very honest and critical, and he would straight, he he won't rip you. He won't. Apart. He will rip me apart. You know, and I need that. Okay. So I I don't go to. Him. 
Yashan, I'm gonna. I was going to give him a shout out for connecting me with Nagas. Yeah, Nagas, <laughs> yeah, your shout out. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to to learn how to do that more because I'm I'm grateful to have someone who will tell me the truth, regardless of me being his girlfriend and knowing how emotional I can be and I can cry. He will still tell me. I just need to gather up the the courage to go go to him more with that kind of stuff. Mm. Right. Okay. So what's what's in the pipeline? What are you working on? So I'm working on what well, actually really, um, really already worked on a new song. It's a collaboration with my, one of my South African friends. I'm not sure if I can say the name of the sure. song yet, mm-hmm. uh, but it's supposed to um, be released in January. Amazing. Yeah. So we're going to keep an eye out yes. on this one. So when when you speak about your your work and your composition, there's a lot of your time spent in South Africa that comes yes. up from university to your friends to your music collaboration. You moved back to Mauritius. Yeah. How did you find it? And, and as someone who's been thinking about it for uh-huh. some time, yeah. how did you find it? Um, it was frustrating at first because when I so you're abroad, you're independent. You you can't. It's not really your own money, but you kind of have your own money. <laughs> I mean, there's no one like looking at what you're doing with the money, um, and then you come back to Mauritius, and suddenly you're back home. Mm-hmm. Um, your parents are on your back, checking at what time you wake up, what you're eating, how messy or how clean your stuff is. So that was very frustrating because I was so used to being by myself, and then you start working, and in Mauritius. The, the salaries when you are starting out, I don't know if it's the same because I've never worked um, in South Africa. I don't know, but I'm guessing it's the same everywhere where the, the salary that you start at is not enough for you to move out. So you kind of, okay, yes, now I have some money, but I can't move out because it's too expensive. And I have, I'm used to being independent and doing my own stuff. Now I have my parents around. Well, I love my parents, but... Um, ever since I moved out, which was two years ago, uh, I feel like our relationship is better because okay. we see each other less. So whenever we see each other, we make sure we're spending the best time ever. And um, yeah, so it was frustrating at first, but got better when I moved out. So can I ask you this? And you know, by all means, if you're not comfortable with this, we're going to cut yeah. this out. So you moved out two years ago while being in Mauritius. Yes. How was the decision um, or how did your parents take your decision to move out? Being in Mauritius on a small island where it oh. might still a bit... Yeah. By the way, I say this, that I say that it's traditional, but it's starting to change. I think it's becoming yeah. more, more than accepted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So luckily for me, my parents had uh, left to Rodrigue's Island because my mom was working there and my dad went to support her. So I was already alone in the house. Okay. So that was good. And then I, I moved in with some friends um, while they were still in Rodrigues because um, it was just closer to work. We had a great friendship and it was just, we all worked together as well. So I moved out. And then when they came back, they were like, so are you going to come back now that we're back? And I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> and then it just, I was financially able to do that. So one thing I've noticed about I don't know if it's Indian parents or parents in general. As long as you don't ask them for money, they're fine. <laughs> Do what you want. Don't ask me for money. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. Funny. So I think I think my my mom was fine with it. My dad struggled a little bit because p- the others before me didn't do that. Well, my brother and sister don't live in Mauritius, but I have one sister who stayed with them until she got married. So they kind of expected me to do the same. Mm-hmm. But I think it's for their own sake because if they if they witness the life that I have in terms of how busy, how not, it's not the healthiest life that I have right now. I need to work on that. But I think it would stress them to see me like that, like going to bed late, waking mm. up early, not having time to eat. Or no checking exercise. on when you're home. Yes. Out of- so I thought, well, now that they don't know at what time I'm coming back home, they can sleep and not worry. <laughs> I think it's quite refreshing hearing it because yeah. I've definitely heard of more, and I'm not trying to make this a gender thing, yeah. but I've definitely heard more about my friends who are male moving out, yeah. at least in Mauritius, it's start, starting to become more common and more of an accepted thing. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, when I come back when I come back to Mauritius for holidays, I love being with my mom, my mom and dad, yes. but I'm here for two or three weeks. And I think after some time, I could see like, you know, being eaten in each other's space. And it's a big house, but I think... 
as you go out, you're meeting your friends, you're coming back at a certain time. Yeah. It is a bit of a different dynamic yeah. once you've had this freedom or mm. taste of freedom. Yeah. Hence the question. So I think it's a new refreshing perspective from you having yeah. done it. Yeah, but two, three weeks is okay. Like you, it's like understand the the compromise that, mm-hmm. that I have to make for that period. But if you're st- here to stay for like forever, then it's it's more of a hassle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You mentioned not having the healthiest balance right now. What's going on in Shani's life? It's a mess. Uh, yeah, I have to be honest about it. It's, um, so I, I do too many things. But it's because um, for me, 2023 has been a year of learning because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I started the year without a job. I, was, I quit my old job in December of 2022. And then I went into 2023. Three, thinking, okay, I don't know what I want to do. There's music, there's influencer marketing that seems interesting as well because it's very creative. There's also digital marketing that I could do. So I've been doing all three. Sadly, music has been on the, the last of the three. Um, but I've taken so much work because I, I wasn't sure what I wanted that I, um, I don't have time to have a balanced life currently. And you've been doing quite a lot in the influencer and content creation space. Yes. I see you, and if I may um, shout out as well to Ornit, I see both of you yeah. <laughs> taking up so many campaigns and so many ads. How's that going for you? Um, so it's it's a bit hard to um, handle, I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie, because it's a lot of creativity that goes into it, long hours of shooting, um, even just the negotiation with the brands, meetings, discussing ideas. And I think for me, in 2022, I didn't do any influencer marketing. I okay. had stopped completely because I wanted to focus on um, the business that I, that I was in. And then 2023, I was like, okay, let me try it. But the minute I started, other people started knocking at the door and I got started getting many um, offers. And I've been accepting them and I've had a lot of fun doing them um, this year. But one thing that I've realized is that it stresses me out. It, in the sense that you need to always be creative. Um, sometimes things crop up and it messes your planning or shoots take longer than you expected. Or sometimes you're just not in, the, in a mood to film a video, but you have a deadline. You have mm-hmm. to film it. So even if you're not feeling your best, you still have to do it which is something that happens in any job. Like maybe you're not feeling well, you still have to go to work. So I get that. But it's different when you have to be smiling and um, putting up. Sometimes if, if you're working at a regular job, let's say, like whatever, whatever that means, um, you can afford sometimes to, you know, just go in and not wear any makeup oh, and yes. not dress up <laughs> because like whatever, it's one day out of, I don't know how many. But for influencer, there's this pressure to look good. And although on my stories, I try to portray a more natural side where sometimes I'm not wearing makeup, sometimes I haven't done my hair, just wearing house clothes. Um, whenever I'm posting something for a client, I feel the pressure to, because I'm representing the brand. Mm-hmm. So there's just more effort that goes into it. And that can be stressful sometimes. Do you think you would want to sustain this lifestyle or where is your head at right now? My head, I've made my decision um, over the last few weeks and I've decided that next year I will be doing much less influencer content because I realized that my page started as a music page. People followed me because of my music and a little bit of because of who I was sharing a little bit about my life here and there. But the minute I started posting... um, sponsored content um, the followers are still there they're still supporting the numbers are growing but everyone's asking me where's the music like whenever I meet when when people meet me in the street or they recognize me they're like oh you're the girl who sings with the guitar and I kept thinking for the last few weeks but where's the girl with the guitar no one has seen her in a while so for next year what I'll be doing is less influencer marketing for sure more music and focusing on my um, my company. Amazing. Yes. So we we are going to see Shani, the eight year old Shani, back. Yes, back. back. <laughs> I'm not sure about the moves, but the music will be back. 
That's interesting to hear. And I know we, we're recording in December 2023, yeah. but by the time you, this will be out, this will be 2024. Oh, great. So <laughs> is this going to be your New Year's resolution or is there anything else in terms of resolution for 2024? I'm, I'm really bad with resolutions because every year I set goals and then when I look back, I realize I did not achieve them and that makes me feel a little bit bad about myself. For example, this year I was supposed to cook at home. I was supposed to um, exercise. I was supposed to release new music and I didn't do any of that. I, mean, I started cooking, but I was not consistent with it. Mm -hmm. So I think for, for next year, I, I will not go into details of what I want to do. I will focus on maybe just one thing and I think it should be music. Like just one goal. Next year, I need to be releasing music consistently. But then when you look at your 2023, you've equally, I think you need a new, you need to give yourself a bit a more grace. grace. <laughs> you've definitely had a very busy year, maybe less music, but definitely more in terms of content creation. You've worked with some amazing brands. Yes. Maybe can I just ask you on this one? So do you remember the first time you actually asked to be paid for an influencer job? As the first time I was paid, um, I do remember the first time I was approached. It was not a paid collaboration. It was a barter. It's, okay. it's usually how it works when you're starting yes. out. And that was three, that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. My first collaboration. It was with a, um, it was with a makeup reseller um, from England. And the woman contacted me and said, hey, we'll give you some free products and we'll get you a professional makeup nice. done. So that was my first one. And then the first paid one, oh, I really can't remember. But I'm kind of curious, like, did you have to ask or did they approach you? Because I feel me. like with a collaboration, yes, it's on a, you know, on a barter system. We'll give you this. What did yeah. you? I think increasingly there's so much of framework around the influencer marketing space. Mm. Uh, there are rules, there are deadlines to your point. Yes. And in exchange, I personally feel it's only fair to be asking for payment. Of course. And sometimes brands may not respect that. Hence my question to you, if you had to ask eventually because you have the profile for it. Yes. Or if you are actually approached by a brand. So for my first time, I was approached. Okay. And because it was the first time, I, I didn't know um, how that world worked. So I, I accepted it and I was happy to do it. I became really good friends with the makeup artist, even with the person who um, approached me. But then over time, um, I, as I learned more about the industry, as some brands decided, started to pay, I started seeing different numbers. Some mm -hmm. brands were paying a lot, others were paying less. Um, after some trial and error, I've kind of understood where I stand and what I'm willing to do and not willing to do. For example, I do very, very little butter. Um, if I do it, it should be for a brand that I really love and that I would actually, I, pay, I was going to I was gonna go yeah. buy your product, but if you're giving it to me, sure, I'll, I'll do the content for you. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a job. I have a videographer, I have an editor, I... I spend a lot of time thinking about concepts. Um, shooting can take a whole day sometimes, so I need to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I, I definitely rate that. Yeah. When Maybe one of my very last questions, and I say questions with an S because I always say last question and yeah. that never is the case. When you think about what you've achieved over the past few years, so moving from early, early childhood and music, more of a musical exposure, and then the academic path to architecture studies and then eventually content creation. Mm. And now you have your own company, which yes. is in the digital marketing space. Yes. Where does that leave you in terms of what's your thoughts about the education system in Mauritius? Especially as someone who's been in the public limelight as a laureate. It has changed so much. It has. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I see my friends looking at my stories, the ones from back in high school, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's going on in their heads because <laughs> they're thinking you, so there's something that's a little bit off with you, but as long as you're happy, I guess that's fine. Um, so the education system in Mauritius. Um, I think, okay, so there's, there's two ways to look at it. I'm all for education because there is a minimum that you need to do. Agreed. Uh, yeah, because you, you need to be able to read contracts, you need to be able to understand, you need to be able to count your money. Like it's, it's very, education is very important. But I feel like there is too much pressure sometimes on what type of education you're doing. I'm a big believer that if someone has a talent, 
that they should not be forced to do something else because it supposedly pays better. Because if you're talented you, and you're passionate about something, you won't feel like you're working and you will want to, to work and you will, it'll be more likely for you to stand out in that sense. So for me personally, I didn't go into architecture thinking about money. It was just something that I wanted to do. But when it comes to marketing, that's something that I chose by myself without any, um, any external advice. It was my own decision. And my family was a bit worried at first because they thought if she's going to have her own company, is she going to be able to mm -hmm. financially sustain herself? But it has been the best financial year of my life. Amazing. Because um, it's, it's something that I really enjoy. And I know that the more I work, the more I make because I'm my own boss. And I'm not saying everyone should become entrepreneurs and have their own thing. But as long as they're doing something that they're really passionate about, they won't mind putting in the hours. I love that because I think, yes, we do come from somehow like a, an island that has been very um, focused on education. And when I say education, it's really academic education, yeah. right? And I think eventually we're seeing so many different so many different um, careers and professional paths, even the space we're at, like Workshop 17, mm -hmm. it's such like an entrepreneurial yeah. um, vibe to it. And I think it's really interesting like hearing the perspective because to the extent that Mauritius, I think our literacy rate is like cl close to like 92%, that's, which is that's really amazing. high for an African <laughs> island. But I think there's so many other things that this new generation could be doing. And the more I come back to Mauritius on my holidays, I've talked to Brian and all, and I've spoken to yeah. you. There's so many different entrepreneurship um, ideas that are coming yeah. up, which is amazing. And as one of the few girls bosses that I've had mm -hmm. on the show, how's that going for you in terms of having the company? Mm -hmm. You set that up. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not something I thought I would ever do. Okay. I always thought I'd work for a company. But then with my boyfriend being so entrepreneurial, he was the one who pushed me and said, you'll make so much more money if you work for yourself. You, you can do it. You have it in you. Um, just give it a go. Mm -hmm. And at first, I was super, not worried, but I was nervous about it because all of a sudden, it's my, resp it's my full responsibility. So um, I started as a freelancer, but then it's, I didn't even market myself. People kind of, Came learned about me mm -hmm. and, and came to me and within the space of four months I had to start hiring people to help me um, because it was becoming a bit much it's very rewarding okay so it is stressful but it's very rewarding and you can scale up when you have a company and um, I definitely see myself doing that for many years and Shani, if I were to think about what's been really interesting from this chat, in a cute way, by the way, okay. you look so like composed and calm, like got everything going Thank for you. you. And I love the little stories about your dad thinking, please don't lose the passport. And you like, you lost it. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what you wanted to do in terms of studies. I'm like, no, dad, I'm rebelling. This is what I want. Yeah. How do you think would people describe you? Uh, I am rebellious, you are? but I don't look like I'm rebellious. No, you don't. <laughs> you definitely don't, which is really like, don't judge a book by its cover. Do not. I look all small and sweet, but I uh, I do know, sometimes it takes me a while because okay. I, I like to test things first. But once I know what I want, there's no stopping me. You go for it. Yeah, I go for it. And if, if it doesn't work out, I've learned so much and then I move on to the next thing. Um, yeah. Amazing. Shani, what can I wish for you in 2024? To be more organized <laughs> and to have a, a more balanced life in terms of sleep, food, exercise. Well, I genuinely wish that for you. Thank and you so if much. I may, a little boost of confidence from me of someone who's watched you grow, I think there's a certain there's a certain kindness that comes from you. Oh, and I think you around you, people definitely it reminds me somewhat of Maya Angelou's. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's like mm -hmm. it goes people will forget what you did, but people will not forget how you I made them feel. feel. And yes. I think you're probably one of those persons. So I can only wish you the best. Thank you. Amazing to have met you in person and to finally have recorded with you. Yes, thank, thank you for being you here so today. Much. Thank you so much for having me. And you're an amazing host. You make conversation very easy. You're saying I'm composed, but it's because you made me feel at ah. ease and at home. And that's really <laughs> sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.